Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface, outside of the Temple of Atalhakar, commonly referred to as the Sunken Temple in Stonard. Like many dungeons in Cataclysm, this received a complete overhaul, and what used to be a humongous dungeon got scaled right down to a single level. Not only that, they also changed the instance portal area too, so upon your arrival, you could just go straight in. There was no fanning around with all the trash mobs around the side. Upon entering it in its current format, you got some sort of idea, not a huge idea, but some sort of idea about how big it actually was. Look up and around you and you'll see various balconies which are very carefully lit up by various torches. And if we made our way to the centre of the room, there's a big grill which is now covering up a hole which you could have actually fallen down in the original version. But there's definitely a room down there. So, the question is... Now that the temple has actually changed and we're just on a singular level going down various pathways to defeat the bosses in a very linear fashion, let's be honest with you, is there any way to go back to the original dungeon and see how massive it used to be? Well, the answer is yes. Return back to the portal that you entered from, adjust your camera so it's pretty much just above your character, and then charge forward as if you are leaving the instance. Once you hit the portal, <gasps> Alt F4 and shut the game down before it has time to kick into a loading screen and take you outside. Load back into the game and you should be on the correct side that we want to be of the portal. And then from here on in, you can actually move forward and explore the original dungeon, which has, can I just stress right now, the biggest stairways I have ever come across in my World of Warcraft life. Look at this thing. But because the stairway is so massive, it gives you an indication of the depth and the verticality that this dungeon brought. If I was to go here to the right hand side, this is the original entrance, but this is the only place here that Blizzard has chosen to block off with an invisible wall. That is it. Nowhere else. So I'm going to use this point as our nexus, as our hub, and I'm going to take this pathway, bearing in mind there was three branching off, to go further down into the original dungeon. Once more, we have this tremendously long staircase which takes us down, which again reaffirms that verticality of this dungeon. It wasn't so much huge in a sense of the layout, it was huge in the sense of the depth of it. Absolutely massive. Arriving at the bottom, and we're going to come to a little bit of a familiar sight. Yes, the water that we saw through the grill at the top when we entered the current instance. And now down here, from what I can remember, used to be one of the bosses. And the way that this boss was summoned... Well, actually, I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to show you the way that this boss was actually summoned. But it's a really cool looking place. And if you actually take the time, instead of just sort of running around like a headless chicken, look at the architecture around the place. Look at the carvings that are on the wall if you look up and around you. You see a lot of troll influence here. And things which, to be honest with you, I've never actually seen architecturally in the game anywhere else. I would definitely have to go out and explore to see if they actually existed on other troll architectures on other troll areas. So I'm going to return back now to the Nexus and go down a different route. Now I've picked this pathway in particular because if we went through the other pathway it would simply go up but here you notice the stairs going up to the left hand side but also a staircase going down to the right hand side and then when you follow this round you come to the area I was talking about earlier about having to summon the boss into here. Now, this is a balcony, one of many that is surrounding the room. A beam of light would shine down onto one of the balconies, and that would be your point of reference to go over there and defeat the mobs. Once they were defeated, another beam of light would briefly shine on another balcony. You had to correctly get the sequence together to summon the boss in. 
And that really epitomizes what the Sunken Temple dungeon all used to be about. You see, this wasn't just different in the sense of its layout. Instead of having breadth, this had verticality and depth. But no, the way that you actually had to summon the bosses to fight was completely different to any other dungeon out there. And in actual fact, I would call it almost verging on genius. But I'll get to that in a moment, because here now we're coming on the overhead balcony, which looks out over the current instance and the current version of the Sunken Temple dungeon. You see, all that's actually separating us from seeing the old instance was the instance portal. If that was removed, then it's all still locked together. It's all still connective tissue. Blizzard have simply blocked us off from seeing this amazing aesthetic, an amazing layout of what the dungeon used to be, which is so, so sad indeed, because it is absolutely awesome. So yes, let's return back to the summoning of the bosses. They weren't just stood there waiting for you to smack them. No, you'd have to defeat certain creatures. In instance that we saw earlier, certain creatures in a certain order. And then that would summon the bosses in. If you defeated certain bosses, then that would unlock and open up other bosses for you to then have a crack at. It was a very clever layout and I definitely believe there is a place in the world of Warcraft today for this intricate dungeons for players that want a little bit more out of their game that involve more coordination especially here where you could so easily get yourself lost and have to have your teammates and friends come back and grab you and drag you to the area that you needed to be. But no, this is one of these places where you could have more coordination and you could have to do certain elements to unlock bosses to fight. I definitely, definitely believe that this is something which is drastically missing from the World of Warcraft dungeon structure today. And just going down these corridors right now, I am filled with such emotion and, and, and so many memories of this awesome place that it is quite heartbreaking in a way to see it just fenced off. And it's sort of like putting out a mare to pasture. And when its best days were still ahead of it. I would have liked to have seen Sunken Temple revamped either into two dungeons if they really wanted to break it down. Or just leave it in its absolute glory. Because its glory was magnificent. So there we go. The hidden dungeon still existing within the Sunken Temple today. And I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Those links are in the description down below and I'll be back with more stuff very soon. But before I go, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Yaktronix for sponsoring my channel and this video. Yaktronix are a PC peripheral company that deal with customized keypads and mice. So if you have a company logo or a clan tag that you'd like to see on a Razer Naga Epic mouse, then they can do it for you. Or if you'd like to have a mouse with your favorite YouTuber's logo on it, <coughs> yours truly, then there's actually some heel versus babyface branded products as well. Use the promotional code BABYFACE and get yourself 7% off the whole order. So go to yaktronics.com, the link's in the description down below. Supporting them supports me. You take care, everybody. Bye-bye.